there's something about toy food. I always want to play with it too. I get served coffee all the time and it's so good. <laughs> Hi, my name is Rachel Gloria Adams, and this is my handmade home in Portland, Maine. Hi guys, come on in. I'm so excited to show you my place. I am an artist and mural painter and designer. My mom's an artist and an art teacher, and I think that I kind of bucked against the reality that I had it in me, and so I didn't really start making art until my senior year in high school, um, I went to a college fair and talked to an art school and they said that they didn't have homework and I was like, that's the school I wanna go to. Ended up getting into all the art schools I applied to and I just haven't stopped since. Brian and I created these series of like vignettes around the house, I like to think of it as. The pattern matching and the color stories, things that happen within our artwork, but it's also now kind of translated into the home. As artists, we're maybe doing things that, you know, an interior decorator might not think to do just because of the way we process color and process pattern as texture and just not being afraid to put it up, you know, whatever that may be. And then this is our living room. I kind of was going through this like green period, so you'll notice that this wall color is actually a color that I used in I think six or seven or eight or nine or 10 murals last year, and it was just kind of my go-to green. Over here is actually one of my pieces. A lot of my artwork from that time period also used a lot of greens and blues, just really craving like the green of summer. The artwork in my living room is kind of a departure. I actually don't like the colors red and orange that much, and I kind of challenged myself to figure out a way to make it work. So I knew that I needed to warm it up a little bit. I started with this vintage print that we got in town, and that kind of served as the basis for everything. This is actually a pillowcase that we framed. I just got a kick out of it as an illustration. This over here is actually fabric that's stretched over a canvas, which is a great way to be able to get a lot of color at once and a really inexpensive way to have unique artwork. We both are really drawn to just like really bright, flat color. And so, and that's in our own personal artwork and then kind of the artwork that we gravitate towards. A lot of the artwork is from, you know, friends of ours or just kind of our immediate art community. It's nice having a history with some of the artwork. And so like that part of it's really nice because it's tied to a relationship or an experience. I think everything has like a little bit of a history to it. We have this Copenhagen print from Ryan and I's first trip to Europe together and it was on a fence and we pulled it down and somehow managed to fly it back here. I have a Jewish step-grandmother who needle points. She didn't actually make this but I think my aunt gave it to my mom as a joke and I saw it and loved it and it's just kind of this thing that I can't get rid of because it reminds me of her even though she didn't make it, I don't know. <laughs> so we knew that with having four of us live here that we could never really fully commit to the one space always being one thing and we had to be open with the fact that our needs were gonna constantly change. So our basement was our office and studio for a while and then that has now turned into a playroom. We wanted the girls to just be able to feel like this was like their own little world and we wanted there to be kind of like all different activities for them to be able to do in here. We told the girls as clients, like, what would you want in a mural? They gave us a list of like all the things they would want. And so on Christmas morning, um, we had the tree out and they came downstairs and there was nothing under the tree, which I got a lot of joy out of for a split second. And then they went downstairs and we had like a bubble machine going and they had no idea it was happening the whole time. We kept it all under wraps. Ryan and I both paint murals and so we kind of assigned each other the areas. He was able to do their names in his graffiti lettering. Nora has a thing for strawberries and she also asked for poop. So we've got a poop emoji as well. You know, clients have their needs. Zoe, we call Zobug. She's got a little ladybug. It's also kind of fun because Ryan's mom lives in a condo in the same area as us and he got his start spray painting in her basement. Like one of those sweet moments for his childhood to be able to then do it for his daughters. These dolls right here are a collaboration that I did with a local doll maker and this is my fabric. They're the cutest. My two girls, Zoe and Nora. 
We left these large shapes so that different things could be hung within them. When I was designing this part of the mural, these flower shapes with matching frames, by having these removable um, picture frames, we're able to, you know, as the girls get older, update the pictures. My oldest loves to read, and so she's able to go into her little den, zip it up, and then have no one bother her. This is kind of like her little cozy reading nook. My other daughter is our foodie, and she loves being able to use the little kitchenette, and she'll make food and like bring it upstairs on a tray sometimes for us. There's something about toy food that I don't care how old you are, there's just something very magical and fun about them, so it, I always want to play with it too. I get served coffee all the time, and so good <laughs> and yeah and then we've got some additional photos i think like just being surrounded in pictures of families just makes everything better neither of us grew up with a playroom so we didn't really have like a bar set for what a good playroom would entail we just really tried to let our inner child's like kind of shine and figure out what we would have been excited about also as adults we wanted to be able to like you know visit the girls like space and it's kind of like a time for us to like come check out their pad and just have it be kind of whimsical, good clean design. I think I've always loved bright color and pattern but I think having kids has just like fully enabled us to lean into that and maybe do things that we would have done but maybe not as boldly. I mean, it's kind of just our all of our playhouse really. <laughs> This is the girl's bedroom. They asked for a pink room and I <laughs> did not give them that. Um, I gave them a pink rug. I really don't like the whole assigning color to gender situation. My girls love the color pink, but it's not necessarily just because they're girls. And so I wanted an opportunity to make pink pop. I also love the ocean and love water. So to be able to have it feel like this immersive experience with pops of pink, I think makes pink feel stronger. Color can really create an environment without having to have a lot of space. The girls' room, we just painted this blue color that makes the room seem way bigger than it was before. It's not a massive space. Just because it's four kids doesn't mean it has to be straight out of the box kind of colors and that you could have like something that's appealing for both a child and an adult to enjoy. I think with my design and mural work, I try to balance that line of it being approachable by both children and adults. It kind of makes kids feel a little bit maybe more sophisticated, but then it makes an adult feel a little bit more playful. We also have these two Mary Mecco fabrics that are also stretched over canvas. My sister gifted this fabric to me for, um, when I was pregnant with each of my daughters. It just feels like something we'll have forever. This is a piece by, um, they go by Dirty Bandits and it's kind of just like a traditional sign painter lettering format. This is kind of where Ryan's style comes into play where we've got our lettering and this just felt like the perfect kind of piece to put into the girls room. This is also by my same friend. So she recreated childhood ornaments that she had and she's actually my youngest godmother. So she's gifted us these that are also kind of like um, mementos from her childhood that have like been made modern, which is kind of in a way, I guess, a theme of a lot of the stuff in our home. By having all these handmade objects by family members and loved ones around, I hope it inspires them that if they have an inkling to be creative that they feel like they can just do it and they have examples of people doing it. I mean, we always say like, be, like, just be unapologetically yourself and I think for them to see us both following our dreams, it's exciting because not a lot of people get to see their parents do what they love and so I think that in itself is powerful. And then I think growing up in a house full of art, I think it's just, I think it's just joyful. The artwork that they bring back home, I can see our house reflected in what they're doing at school. You know, it's what we're passionate about and being able to share that passion with our kids is really exciting. Honestly, this is gonna, like, <laughs> it's gonna sound kind of weird. I'm excited for the next adventure. I think that, you know, you learn so much with taking over a space like this and then it's like helped me build my creative voice and my design sense and it makes me want to take on additional challenges and like what possibly could be next. I mean, it's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Handmade.